Welcome to this presentation regarding Davis-Bacon and Certified Payroll, sponsored by the North Dakota Department of Transportation Office of Civil Rights. My name is Greg Hansen, and we are Project Solutions. We are the DBE Support Services Consultants for the state of North Dakota, have been since about 2015. Um, we're writing this topic because we get asked about it a lot, so hopefully you'll grab uh, uh, some information off it that you can use in your business, make it run smoother. I want to give you a little disclaimer here that you know, this presentation is intended as general information only. You know, each business, each situation is unique, and uh, you need to speak with um, the Office of Civil Rights or the Department of Labor maybe to get clarification. But just this is an overview, and uh, if your situation is different, you might want to consult others before you move forward. So we've, we've come up with seven steps to implement certified payroll. Uh, in your business, and we provide the Davis Bacon. So, you know, on this piece of paper, uh, it has some of the basic rules about uh, the Davis Bacon, and this is supposed to be posted at your job site. And then um, you'll have another sheet that goes with it that would you'd publish the rates. So, let's go over seven steps to implement certified payroll. Um, uh, step one is educate yourself. You know, know the rules and regulations regarding wages and benefits, um, and make sure the people who you work with you also know. Make sure they know what is their role in making sure your company's compliant. Um, sometimes the timekeeping requirements can be tricky. On the same day, the same person could perform multiple duties. And then one, one, it might be a truck driver in the morning, a laborer in midday, and equipment operator later on, depending on the size of the project. So, you know, you're going to want to be able to track time, employees' time by those. Um, you know, also, the federal labor laws require proof of clock in, clock out for all hours work, not just not, not just Davis-Bacon. So, um, Also here, though, the prime contractor's responsible sub for subcontractor's compliance. So if you think your subcontractor or your the prime contractor is pushing you around too much, it's because they're ultimately responsible for this. So if you're subbing to one of them, you know, they... Uh, you want to make sure everybody's in compliance. Resources. Uh, the North Dakota DOT has got some great uh, resources regarding this. Uh, um, the uh, Davis-Bacon Wage and Payroll Requirements Handbook is very good. If you're a truck driver, a lot of truck drivers in the DBE program in North Dakota, there's a great uh, scenario Q&A that uh, we've downloaded and read, and it's, we're going to be doing another training on that one. So, um, Also, the civil rights staff. Um, Amy and Ramona, their team are be able to, a good resource for you to speak with. On, uh, you're getting educated. So step one, educate yourself and your team. Know what the rules are and how you, what you need to do um, to make sure that you're complying. Step two is know the prevailing wage and benefits requirements. Once you, in step one, learn about the regulations themselves, step two, now we need to know what hourly rates are. And these are published and they're often attached, attached to the contract. Uh, Department of Labor posts them as well. And know what classifications your company and what functions its workers will be doing. Laborers, concrete finishers, form setters, drivers for various types of trucks. You make sure you understand the difference what type of trucks they're, they're going to be driving as the rates are different for each one. So and then step two is you know, knowing the rates. Step three, train your crew on their timekeeping requirements. Just so the you know, the work starts and the compliance starts in the field and having your employees know how uh, they're responsible for this timesheet. Now I've, I've found some samples on the on the internet. Here's Jonas Enterprise, T-sheets with QuickBooks and uh, Rockin' or Rakin', uh, a couple of them, but there's a number of apps that can be downloaded to a, somebody's smartphone. They can keep their time themselves. Some people use spreadsheets, Excel, or you can use just a paper timesheet on the job site. But know the classifications and then so that the person is recording their time for each classification. Um, as I said, on several several times during the day, somebody could be working on multiple classifications and you need to be able to record time um, accordingly. So step three is train your crew. Make sure they know that you're re relying on them and the law requires them to keep an accurate timesheet and that the superintendents and foremen are involved as well.
Let's talk about the people who are not covered by Davis Bacon on a job site uh, or in your company. This could be the people who work administratively or people who are considered exempt or executives uh, or professionals under the Fair Labor Standards Act. Foremen are generally not exempt. You know, so if you have a foreman who's supervising at least two people, uh, they could be exempt, but you know, it's, it's for realms practical purposes, it'd probably be best that you pay the foreman at least the Davis Bacon wages that the other people are getting. So not everybody in your company is covered, and there's just some illustrations of those that are not. Another one that Davis Bacon reply, is applied to is the site of work, um, where they are working directly on the site of the work. The site of the work is defined in the bid letting and you can consult the Office of Civil Rights for clarification of what is the job site. So um, let's go to the next slide here. So the site of the work is, does not include a contractor's or subcontractor's home office, branch offices, maybe a fabrication plant, tool yard, etc., uh, whose location and continuance in operation are determined without regard to a particular covered project. You know, the picture we had there a minute ago where they're working on the bridge for that highway interchange. Well, the job site could be miles uh, either direction of that bridge location because it was defined in the contract when it was let. So all those areas up and down that highway um, could be considered part of the job site. And when your workers are on that or working or are on that job site, um, the Davis Bacon regulations would apply. So that's again back to training your employees. You know where what is the job site and how they need to record their time when they are on the job site. So they're paid in compliance with the law. Now this next step forward is wages or fringe benefits. In the Davis-Bacon Act, the terms wages or prevailing wages includes the basic hourly rate, there's an acronym there, BHR, and fringe benefits, FB. FB can be discharged or paid in lieu of uh, by contributions you make to a trustee or third party pursuant to a bona fide or a, a, a real fringe benefit fund. Um, contributions paid by employer are revocable. So if you are going to claim a benefit that you have that for an employee, you can't be able to have access to be able to take it back. So it has to be uh, irrevocable. And you got to know how to pay fringe benefits. Um, you, the fringe benefits are compared to the prevailing wage. And you can do it by either paying them the wage and the benefit. You can pay a part of it into a bona fide plan, or you can make a combination uh, of the two examples coming up here in a minute. Also, fringe benefits must be paid, paid weekly for all hours worked. Now, Service Contract Act, um, it's only the first 40 hours, but uh, the Davis, Davis Bacon, um, it has to be on all hours worked. But it is straight. It is straight time, not time and a half. So if somebody works 50 hours, the fringe benefit rate doesn't change. Here's an example. Uh, the bank's hourly rate is $10 an hour. Fringe benefits is a dollar. The total prevailing wage is $11. You can comply by paying them $11 an hour in cash wages. You can pay $10 in cash wages plus a dollar for fringe benefits or $9 in cash wages plus $2 for fringe benefits. So uh, you wouldn't have to, on their paycheck, you wouldn't have to break those two out. You have to, you could show it as one number if, if you wanted to. Some examples of fringe benefits, life insurance plans. These are plans that are sponsored by the employer. Uh, you have, can pay part of the premium as the employer. Some of it is paid by the employee. Uh, life insurance, health insurance, pension, paid vacation, holiday. If you pay, people pay on uh, working on if they're uh, off on a holiday, sick leave. So there's some examples of types of fringe benefits that your company could offer. You know, dental, vision, stuff like that. Uh, the portion that the company pays is a benefit that could be used to pay in lieu of uh, cash. You can take credit without prior approval for bona fide fringe benefit fund contributions made to third party trustees are, like again, I mentioned this earlier, irrevocably paid, meaning the money that the employer takes out of a paycheck or matches uh, with their money 
can give it to a third party. It can't be taken back. So uh, they're made regularly, not, not less often than quarterly. Uh, uh, credit is for payments made for individual workers eligible to participate in the plan, program, or fund. Um, another asterisk here, if you have a company where they can buy company stock, many of those plans are not considered eligible to offset the fringe benefit if they're buying a stock ownership plan, like an, sometimes an ESOP. So you want to get clarification on, on that one. How do you convert a benefit to an hourly wage? I, the best way to do that is by an example. In this example where the, health ins the company's health insurance is paying three-fourths of the employee's uh, health insurance cost. And in our assumption that the employee's premium is $600 a month or $7,200 a year, and the employer is paying 75% uh, of that, uh, three-fourths, so it's $5,400 a year is the employer's cost. Next thing is to estimate the number of hours the employee will work in a year. And if you take 52 weeks times 40 hours a week, that's 2,080 hours in a year. Or a little bit, that's $2.60 an hour cash equivalent hourly of that health insurance benefit. And in the wage determination, determination requires a $2.50 per hour. Well, your, your benefit is worth $2.60, so you're 10 cents an hour overpaying on that. You could back down their, their uh, wage by 10 cents an hour to make it to make it equal. So this is an illustration of how to convert a benefit to an hourly rate. How about overtime? An employee worked 44 hours as a truck driver. Wage determination base hourly rate is $22 an hour plus $4.50 an hour in fringe benefits. So 44 times the fringe benefit is $198. 44 hours times $22, again, the base hourly rate, equals $968. And the overtime is just, you know, we've already counted for the street time on those hours over 40, but we now just need the half time, which is $44. So uh, $1,210 is this person's gross pay. So a note here. So. Fringe benefit is straight time, all hours worked, not time and a half. So when you do your programming for hourly rates, you got to remember to keep that keep that in mind. Uh, step five, follow the rules. Make sure your processes support certified payroll and compliance factors. Make sure you know the type of work being performed. You know, is this is it is the work is it is it a laborer or is it a form finisher? So there's, you know, what how does how do the regulations define which is what, what is which? So there's, if you're paying somebody labor and they determine that they're a concrete finisher, uh, there's a big difference. Um, you know, can make sure you know how many hours are worked, whether it's straight time and overtime. And what is the wage rate for each of the classifications? Make sure you've got it right. And that the actual payment to the worker is verifiable. Here's another one down here at the bottom. Employees pay stubs match the certified payroll records. We've had companies show us their their pay records and then the certified payroll reports, and they don't match. And they're wondering why they're getting pushback from the contractors on their uh, pay applications because when their certified payroll reports don't equal their payroll records. You don't need to know what deductions from gross pay are allowed. For example, you know, from the gross pay, you can deduct the normal taxes we're used to. Um, you can also deduct the employee's portion of their health insurance premiums. Um, if, they have a, if you have a bona fide savings plan or a 401k, simple plan, something like that. Sometimes there might be a garnishment or a child support, something like that. Those are legal uh, gross pay deductions. Um, Sometimes there are different regulations. If you're providing housing um, or transportation to and from the job site for employees, sometimes those are deductions are allowable, and you want to get clarification on that before you do that. Um, there's, there's regulations on, um, especially housing. If it's for the employer's convenience, the housing oftentimes is not deductible. Uh, loan payments, repayments um, can be deductible. Is a gray area. I recommend you avoid it just in just in, just in case because it's um, 
shouldn't come back to get you if you make a deduction that is not allowable. To ensure compliance, the Office of Civil Rights will also visit the job site and uh, will ask the employees questions about their pay and rate of pay. On the right side of the screen is a sample form that used to be used but is now all being done digitally on, uh, on tablets through the LCP tracker software. So the same software that you're entering uh, certified payroll, they are using to upload employee interviews that can cross electronically, cross check uh, pay rates, uh, etc. So this form on the right though is a paper version of what the questions will include. It'll ask the, the employees, uh, what's your, what are you being paid? Uh, are you being paid overtime? Do you know what the published pay rate is for your position, et cetera? So, so make sure uh, your employees know that uh, this, they had it, what the answers are so that when the inspectors or the uh, OCR people come around, they will uh, have the answers. And um, it does tie out with their paychecks and with what's uploaded to certified payroll. Just makes everything easier to have this, the employees know what's coming uh, as they're on, working on the job site. Step six, programming your payroll software. This is uh, um, another big area of deficiency we see where the prevailing wage descriptions have to match the hourly pay rates. So you want to take it right out of the contract and put it into your software of what the job description is, what the hourly rate is, and what the what the fringe benefit is. Now if you put these uh, items into the employee's profile, it'll come up every time when, when you're entering their hours. Also, if you're using QuickBooks, um, you want to use, when you do, do pay employees, use the weekly timesheet option to enter work hours. Very important. So uh, make sure that the fringe benefits uh, match the prevailing wage reports. Uh, again, and the employee pay stubs need to mirror the certified payroll records so that so you, the, the hourly rate number of hours by different uh, classifications match to the to the timesheet very important uh, step seven a certified payroll report is the name and the uh, workers classification hourly rates of pay for each one number of hours worked deductions made actual wages paid and on the back there's a certification where you uh, are Guaranteeing that the employees' wages and benefits reduction apply with the Davis-Bacon regulations. You, know, their, you, know, you, you do not want to put their full social security number or home address on this report. Um, some most people just use the last four digits of their social security number. Um, the prime contractor must maintain addresses and social security numbers for all workers, and provide it upon request if need be. Um, must be submitted each week within seven calendar days of the payment date. Uh, down here at the bottom, circle this again. The prime subcontractor is, I'm sorry, the prime contractor is responsible for all submission of payrolls by all subcontractors. And I said earlier, you know, so they are they are ultimately responsible for the compliance of this. And so, if you want to get along with everybody, you want to make sure you're doing your part to make it compliant. There's a form that we're going to talk about here in a minute. It's, it's called the WH347. Um, used for certified payroll records and you gotta have the certified compliance um, in North Dakota that's, they're using the LCP tracker it sounds when if you go on to it it's get it set up for each job um, it takes a little while but it's it's very very helpful they're very very intuitive and it, you need to have the, the prime gets it set, gets you set up and then away you go but it's so there is some this, this is the WH347 that everybody used to use. We have this in Excel, so if you if you want to be able to do this in Excel, we have this. This is if you go download it from the internet, it's PDF, but we've had it made into an Excel, so you can do your payroll off of it. But um, but like I said, if, if you do this paper version of this or Excel version in the state of North Dakota, you're going to have to turn around and enter it into their LP, LCP tracker anyway. So um, on the other side of this form is the certification that you certify that this everybody's paid according to the law. 
and if there's any exceptions to it. Well, let, let's summarize some of the key points here. Um, number one, uh, learn the rules and regulations. Uh, if you're going to be in the heavy highway construction, Davis-Bacon regulations often apply. So know the rules and regulations of the program. Know the prevailing wage and benefits required for the work your team is be doing. Um, that's a, an important part of it. There's different tasks to have different rates, so make sure you know those. Uh, train your field staff and office staff in their roles. Make sure they know they don't have to know all the regulations, but they have to know how important it is their part to uh, help your company comply with the rules. You ought to want to learn how to convert company benefits to hourly cash equivalents. Now, it's, it's easier to just pay the just pay it, which if that's up to you. But if you do have benefits, you can uh, reduce your fringe benefit by paying cash in lieu of paying benefits. Follow the rules, they say that often, but make sure your payroll processes and how you gather the timesheets from the field and how your accounting system is set up to uh, produce compliant payroll records. Use a certified payroll worksheet. It's, it's, uh, it's a good worksheet for even though it's all have to be submitted online now to uh, LCP Tracker, uh, but that worksheet is, is a good tool for using it for manually updating the information into into the LCP tracker. And remember, pay stubs have to match certified payroll submissions. Over the years, we get calls from time to time of uh, companies needing help uh, getting paid. They're, wondering, you know, they're getting a little frantic that their prime contractor hasn't paid them, and it's because their payroll records are not pro uh, correct. And until they're correct, the prime doesn't want to pay them because they're responsible for the compliance. So. If that ever happens to you or anybody you know, you know you might know what I'm talking about. I'd like to share with you some useful web links that has information about the program that you find beneficial. The North Dakota Labor Compliance and Prevailing Wage uh, link takes you to the state's uh, website um, and it's full of information about Davis-Bacon and, and regulation um, truckers. There's a whole section on a scenario based Q&A for for truckers it's very good so go there if you're learning getting started lots of information then we have the, uh, the link to the Department of Labor's form WH347 and this is sort of where certified payroll started before uh, all the software came out you're going to want to use the LCP tracker ultimately but this form is a good learning tool I encourage you to take a look at it and the last one there is the Department of Labor um, Davis Bacon page talks about government contracting in the construction business and some tools that you can use and again we are project solutions we're the db support services consultants for the state of north dakota have been like i said since about 2015 here's our link to our website and the north dakota page in our website um, services are provided at no charge to north dakota db firm so if you need help with any uh, of this information about uh, uh, Davis Bacon regulations or certified payroll, how to keep track of it. Um, if it's part of our contract, glad to help. Danae Johnson is our point of contact person. She's our DBE project coordinator and she's located in Bismarck. I'm Greg Hansen. I'm in Rapid City, South Dakota, but I get to North Dakota um, a couple times. I hope I get a chance to meet many of you uh, somewhere down the road. Thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, again, our contact information is on the screen. If you have any questions and again thank you